Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us. His name is Savio Clemente, and he is a cancer survivor, and he is a one-on-one -on -one coach, and he's an author, and he his main goal is helping others and inspiring them and giving them the power to foresee what's special about themselves and how to cope with life in general. So Savio, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Sure, Stacy. thank you so much for inviting me to uh, be on this podcast. I really appreciate it. So hi everyone, my name is Savio P. Clemente. Uh, I'm a board certified wellness coach. I'm a uh, wellness journalist, syndicated columnist, uh, author, best-selling author, and also a podcaster. And what I do is I um, help cancer survivors overcome the confusion gain the clarity needed to get busy living in mind, body, and spirit. I know that's a mouthful, but really just means that whatever happened to you in your life, that there is a way to come back stronger, better. And what, what a, a good client of mine once called the 2.0 version of themselves. You know, I always feel like, you know, the past is the past. We cannot change the past. We have to focus on the present and then work on the on our present to make a better future for ourselves. How do you feel about that? I think it's very important to have that in mind in terms of creating that next um, version of yourself. You know, I in coaching, there's a, there's a sort of theme that runs through, which is this idea of creating a vision for yourself. And I think most people get stuck on how that vision will ever come to be. And what they really need to focus on is what is one step in that direction? Exactly. And I think it's very important to let go of the past or at least let go of things that keep you bolted into the past. Yes, uh, yes. It's fine to reminisce, but I think when you get too stuck, that's when nothing happens in your life. Now, can you tell people a little about your story about how you went through cancer and, you know, let people understand the obstacles that you endured? Sure. So it was in July of 2014. Um, I remember experiencing um, my stomach started getting bigger and bigger. So it was becoming distended. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had a little bit of belabored breathing. Um, so at that mo moment in time, for six years previous to that, I was seeing uh, a naturopath. Basically, a naturopath analyzes your blood work. He basically gives you uh, information on what kind of vitamins to take, what diet structure you need. Everything was going on swimmingly. This, this happened. I went to him. I did my blood work. And he goes, Savio, something is totally wrong here. I can pinpoint three or four different things. I think you really need to go towards the realm of med you know, mainstream medicine and see. I ended up scheduling a sonogram. They would not let me leave the office, Stacey, literally for an wow. hour and a half. And I'm like, what's going on here? They finally came out. They're like, sir, we really need you to call a family member to get you and take you to the hospital. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have a car wow. here. I'm an adult. They're yeah. like, we, you, you really need someone to come and, and do that for you. I'm like, okay. So my dad came by. Uh, I went to the hospital. I saw a doctor there. And literally within an hour, I was admitted to the fifth floor of the oh, hospital. Wow. I heard that night. I heard that night they were whispering that they were going to transfer me to the seventh floor. And they called the seventh floor the cancer floor. So I had an idea that oh, it wow. might be cancer. Yeah. At that moment in time, I had a face mask on um, in terms of oxygen mask. And then I also had um, like something inserted in me. They basically ended up putting a nephrostomy tube in me. And I heard the, doc the doctor whisper in my ear, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma stage three. Um, and then wow. I was bedridden for a week because they had to distend about seven to eight liters of fluid from my abdomen. And oh, then wow. the second week I was in the hospital for a course of two weeks. Um, I was told from the medical director that I need to start my first round of chemo. And, uh, you know, we can talk about more about it, but that was really the onset of me knowing yeah. about my cancer diagnosis. Now, you must have had a load of fear go through your bones. And, you know, how did you deal with the fear? Like, what kind of thoughts actually ran through your head? Because if something like that was happening to me, I'd be so scared and, and life would kind of flash before my eyes. It's like, how, how, did, how did you feel and how did you deal with those emotions? You know, so I think a large part of me dealing with it came through through. So I grew up Catholic. I was, was, I was an altar boy. I went to Catholic elementary school for eight, eight, eight years. But then in college, I knew I needed to explore other belief systems. I was just curious. I was just a very curious person. Right. And so I relied, I relied on my spirituality to get me through it. And it's interesting. I don't know if you ever saw the movie, Little Buddha. I tell the story all the time, but it needs to be told. 
um, with Keanu Reeves. He played Little Buddha. He played Siddhartha in the movie. And so okay. basically he gave up all his possessions, gave up his family. He was meditating with two other individuals. They were living on, I think, one grain of rice a day or whatever the case may be. And yeah. while he was meditating, he heard two people on the fishing boat. And one of them had an instrument. And he says, if the instrument uh, is too loose, it won't play. If it's too tight, it's going to snap. The mm -hmm. way is the middle way. And it like a flash of uh, insight came to me like, oh, I don't have to just do one or the other. I can do chemo, but I can also do other integrated modalities, which is kind of what I was doing before I had cancer. Right. Like I was living a pretty, you know, like I was eating organic foods, working out six days a week. I was drinking water. I was meditating. I was doing all these things before, yeah. but cancer came into my life. So when I was told the news by the doctors, they had to do a bone marrow aspiration, which is a very painful um, yes, procedure. Mm -hmm. I kind of just powered through it, Stacey. And they were really surprised when they broke the news to me. They're like, we've told hundreds of people, unfortunately, that they have cancer. Your reaction is just so puzzling to us. And I said, what do you want me to do? I'm not the type of person to break down. Yeah. I'm the type of person to say, this happened to me. Can I find a way to overcome it in some yeah. way? Mm -hmm. And then let me just like find all the resources in order to get me to where I need to go. And so that's how I dealt with it. My sister actually lived, uh, not lived, she worked close by to the hospital. So she was the first person to see me. And I told her, <laughs> Stacy, she literally broke down. I mean, it was so bad that I was consoling her. And I was like, something is wrong here. <laughs> I'm bedridden on a bed. I'm consoling you. She goes, it's cancer. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you know me. I said, you know me. I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to try, at least try to get myself past this. And so that's kind of what I did. Uh, I was, then I was told, so th that was July of 2014. Um, I had six rounds of, of chemo every three weeks in between. Oh. I did a whole host of integrated modalities. Then I was told December of 2014, um, about four and a half months later, five days before Christmas that I was in remission. Um, oh. uh, and wow. I've been in remission for about eight years. This December will be eight years. Yes. Um, so that's my story, but um, I relied heavily on my spirituality. I relied heavily on my personality. And um, this may come across a little bit woo-woo, but mm -hmm. I also separated myself from my cancer. Like I saw the Savio bedridden with cancer stage three, the physical Savio. And then I also mm -hmm. saw this other expressive Savio that was creative, that had a soul that was spiritual, that was uh, focused, that was energetic. And I tried to literally pull the the literally the dying Savio outside and make that higher Savio be right. the predominant one. Yeah. I I feel like, you know, our, our mental, the way we think plays such a role. If you ever saw like when people get older, the elderly and they've been with their spouse for so many years and then one passes and the other one, a lot of times it's even documented that within six months, the other spouse passes. And I feel like the mind has such a powerful, is such a powerful tool. We don't realize how powerful it is. And if we could have, you know, if we in our head could have a positive mindset and say, I'm going to beat this, I'm going to survive. It really can give you the components that you need inside yourself to actually survive. How do you feel about that? I think, I think right? I teach mindset. This is kind of what I do for a living in terms yeah. of getting people to shift the paradigm or to actually look for, um, uh, uh you know, the, uh, the highlights in their life rather than the low lights in their life. Yes. Uh, I think that's very important, but I also think with that, there's a theory in coaching. It's called the trans theoretical model of change. It's called stages of change. Mm -hmm. And what it posits is that people don't want to change. People are, are not resistant really to change. Yeah. There is, they just don't know how to change. They don't know that there's stages of change. There's like thinking about it, pre-contemplation, there's the yes. action, there's the, the actual doing. And so people need to be moved along. And that's where coaching comes so well, right. because they're able to be moved along in that direction. But I think um, people need the tools and the resources. So it's great to think positive, but you also need to balance that and blend that out with medical science, yes. with integrated modalities or whatever makes you feel mm -hmm. good. Because Stacy, truthfully, healing does not always take place in the doctor's office. Yes. Healing does not always take place in the chemo bed. Healing does not always take place in the hospital. It takes place in those moments when you're sleeping, when you're yes. eating, when you're watching TV. When you're hanging out with family and friends, healing takes place in your mind when you're thinking and feeling and sensing and sadness and crying and happy, that healing comes into play. So 
I, I think it really takes someone to not only have a great, strong mindset, but also feel for themselves, well, what is it that I want to create and how can I get there? If I don't have the tools. How can I find the people who have the tools to help me get to where I need to go? Uh, yeah. So for me, those things are very in innate. I was able to cultivate that, but I understand as a coach, that's not always the case. And so that's yeah. why it's, I think it's very important to make sure that you arm yourself because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. So if you know you have a cancer diagnosis, right? How right. can you get yourself to those other levels that you want to get to? Right. So you're really into also like breaking down to short-term, long-term goals, taking baby steps and going from one, two, three. And, you know, because some people, I think that the biggest thing with people is their impatience. Like so many people just want to get from A to Z and they forget about the middle and they forget about all the little steps in between. And, you know, there is no quick fix. And, you know, if you want to get better in anything, whether it, whether you want to improve in cancer, whether you want to become healthy and whatever, you know, it, it takes time and there are steps and work involved, don't you think? 100%. And the A to Z, if you go that fast, maybe you'll get to the goal quicker but it doesn't mean that it's sustainable in your life. It means right. that you're going to revert. How many times have people hired a trainer and then they got the body they wanted only to go back to where they were before? How many yes. times have they asked for the love of their life to happen? It happens, world will romance. And then a year and a half later, it's say, hey, did yes. I really marry this person? Is this person <laughs> really the person that I want to be with? Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to have not so much the baby steps, but the, the, to acknowledge or be mindful of the steps you took to get yeah. to where you need to go. Cause then if you have a slip up, you can always revert back. But if you go to A to Z immediately, if someone like, let's say gifted you $10 million and you weren't money conscious or money minded enough to know how to deal with the money or how to use that energy because money's energy to yeah. use that in the right way, you're going to revert back to who you were. And exactly. that's, that's where I think, I think the idea of, whether it's cancer or, or a devastating illness comes into play because I think it teaches you wisdom, right? We were talking about yeah. it earlier. Mm -hmm. Cancer to a large degree is horrible and, and painful and terrible and lost many people to it. So I'm not minimizing uh, the struggle, but yeah. I think it teaches you to live a different way than yeah. you're living. And so I committed myself to helping those survivors live that other way because people think once you get that cancer uh, remission status that you're good to go and let's focus on the people going through the struggle. And that's great. But there's many things that happen to you as a result of going through the survivorship journey that no one really addresses. And so that's where I stepped into uh, the fray. I always say to people too, like, you know, I would, I would talk about my own illness, which is epilepsy. And I would say, you know, to me, epilepsy was a blessing and people would look at me like I lost my head and I would be like, you know, not that I want it, but it has made me a better person. I am more appreciative towards life. I have more gratitude. When I look at an individual, I look at them differently. I, you know, I, I, I look at their inside. I look at their heart. I look at who they are and, and I don't judge people by the, the brand they're wearing or the materialistic things that doesn't matter to me, you know, and I, I can, you know, relate to people that even if they go through something different, you know, I can understand, you know, what they're going through inside and there's a connection. And, um, I feel like it's made me a better person, you know, um, instead of, you know, going after those big high goals I had when I came out of college, you know, life gave me a whole different road and it actually made me a better person along the way as well. I think. You know, how do you feel is it has have gone through cancer? Has it how has it changed your life? And you have you seen that it, in some areas it might have made you a better person? So before cancer, I was my background was IT. I was very good at it. I was good behind the scenes. And I promised yeah. myself, Stacey, that if I hit the five year remission mark, never a guarantee, but it's a good barometer that it might not yes. resurface, that I would do something with it. I didn't know in what capacity that was, literally had no idea. Yeah, but I'm doing the work now. So in that respect, yeah, it's changed my life dramatically. But it's also not only made me more empathetic and more sympathetic and more compassionate, but it also allowed me uh, to label myself as a survivor. Mm -hmm. Not that I could brag because I, I think sometimes labels do inhibit you or do yes. uh, stifle you. But it allows me to connect with people who have gone through this similar journey, who understand without me saying what I went through, they understand the 
the emotional aspect of it, the psychological aspect of it. Um, and so that's really why I dedicated to so my, my work and my website, my company is called the human resolve. So I think it's important to go back to the human elements. And yes. those are the things that I do. I have a three month coaching program. And what that is, is it's like every week, like, you know, we meet and I talk, I have a framework called the seven energy centers, right? In yoga, it's called the chakras, whatever, but yes. it's this idea of connecting to the physical, the emotional, the psychological, the astral, uh, the soul, the spiritual yes. and digging deep. And then I use another um, sort of tool set, which is called the three brains, which is the head, heart, and gut, because there's a lot of purported science and documentation that those uh, have consciousness that they themselves that that gut feeling people talk about yeah. actually speaks to us if we yes, just tap done. into that and so I think it's important to be really really clear for yourself well what is the intention that you're setting for where you need to go right and you know I I feel that your mind body and soul have to be connected in order for us to really um, have um, a positive um, you know, um, a happy, healthy, and productive life. I think you would need to be connected your mind, body, and soul. And I always say, I feel like the heart speaks to us, you know, and yes, our inner sense, you know, our, our sixth sense always, you know, when we have that intuition, you know, I feel that that's, that's ourselves trying to talk to us, sending us a message, you know, and people, sometimes when you talk about the sixth sense, oh, no, 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 no. But have you ever, you talk to people, have you ever had an intuition? Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Like, yeah, yeah, I've had that. Well, that that's your inner, your inner self, you know, talking to you, you know, and uh, I agree with you. We have to be interconnected. You know, our, our mind, body, and soul plays a huge part on that, I think. Yeah, because, you know, cancer to a large degree affects the physical body, but yeah. there's other things that you are beyond the physical body, right? We are thinking beings, we are sensing beings, we're feeling beings. And so when you sort of learn the science and are certified, like I am, you understand that the seed of courage is the gut. Yes. And not only is the heart emotions, but actually it rules sometimes even supersedes the mind. Even though yes. the mind keeps chattering and it talks to us, the heart itself is making these rapid decisions. Yes. So there's a framework the way, where you first tap into the heart, then go to the gut, then go back to the mind. Yes. And it's like a continuous flow. But that it only is. happens if you understand and are really clear um, with what it is that you want to you know, create in the world. Yeah, I find too, like a lot of people sometimes go into denial. They don't, you know, even though they're going through it, they don't want to accept what's happening around them. Now, when have you found a lot of people that have, you know, have developed cancer or have developed an illness and they, they know they're going through it, but they're in this denial stage where they don't want to uh, really face the fact of what's going on and they don't want to accept you know, what the, the changes that are happening within themselves. I, that's a beautiful question. I mean, so most of the individuals that I coach are cancer survivors. So they've been through the trauma of cancer, even those lingering effects of unpacking things that even took me quite a while to unpack because it's just such, for me, my cancer was just so fast and furious. Um, yeah. But in terms of uh, realizing or coming to terms or owning it or embodying this idea that you went through this particular um, situation in your life, terrible situation in your life, I think that really the key here is two things. Number one is this aspect that I call about um, owning what's happening to you. Because to know thyself is to heal thyself. Yeah, it's, a, it's it's written in the Bible. It's something that people forget. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, cancer is happening to you. So whatever you think spiritually or medically, it doesn't matter. It means yes. that cancer is happening to you or this illness is happening to you. So you are the only one who can pick yourself. Other doctors can help you get there. Other people can help you get there, but you can only help yourself get through it. So the first stage is like an AAA. It's, it's saying, I have this problem. Yes. Owning the problem and saying, I'm not going to pretend that I don't have the problem. Yes. I'm not going to pretend that I, or scared that I can't go to the scan. Listen, I it's called scan anxiety. I have it. A lot of cancer survivors have it. every year I go. It's going to happen. But you have to confront that. Because yes. that's the only way back to healing. That's the only way back.
Yes. You know, and, and I feel like, you know, also loving yourself is important. You know, sometimes people go through change and they don't like what's happening to them and they don't even can't even look in the mirror. They just don't, you know, they don't like the person that it's be, that that's, that's, you know, they're becoming and people don't like to be powerless. They don't realize everyone. There's so many power stricken people in this society, but they don't realize we don't have the power. We are not in control. The universe is in control. You know, we live here and life takes us on a journey and we have to learn how to cope with the obstacles and the things that, you know, life, you know, gives us, but we are not in power. We don't have a magic wand that can stop these things from occurring. So we are not in the power. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think it's twofold. I think one, we have to meet the opportunity or meet the situation at hand. We can't r r run from it. Running from from a couple of days, that's fine. But ultimately, we can't run from it. So we have to face yeah. it, right? That's number one. Exactly. And we have to try. I mean, we have to at least try. And I'm even saying this for myself. Like, yeah. I have fears. I have things that I go through. I have a newsletter where I literally go into my own stuff because I think it helps other people be yes. more vocal about their stuff. Yes. And one of my big stuff is really to be vocal. I told you recently, I did uh, a live podcast in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. I was nervous because that's one of my things. But yeah. I think you have to at least try and say, okay, at least I did it, right? At yes. least I did it. So that's 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 the key. And so I think that's anything Absolutely. when it comes to cancer or, or an illness is to just say, okay, I'm afraid to go to the doctor today. I'm afraid to see what they're going to say. Yes. But at least now I'm armed with the information. So yes. at least maybe I can create a different course or direction. Exactly. A hundred percent. And you know, uh, one thing that I I love about the um the the cancer community is that I see so many people so positive and they are going to, you know, survivorship is a big thing in, in the cancer community. When you look in the epilepsy community, we find that we have a lot of people that are angry, frustrated, depressed, negative emotions override the positive emotions. But when you go into a cancer community and you meet a lot of people with cancer, they have a very different outlook. You know, they want to survive and they're going to do whatever it takes to survive. And that is so amazing to me. And it's such a great thing because you like we talked earlier, the mind, the heart, the inner self plays a big role. And if you have that will to want to live and want to survive, and you're going to do whatever it takes to survive, most likely you will survive. You will live, you will survive. You'll live longer. Maybe, you know, your outlook will be more positive. You know, when people are net, when they're negative, their immune system starts to break down. They open themselves up to more illnesses, more terrible things. And it's a totally different, you know, um, it's a very bad way of living. But, you know, what's your suggestions to people that are kind of, they're so, they're right now, they're digging themselves in a hole. They're just looking at the negative. They're looking at the worst scenarios. How do you help those people? What would be your suggestion to, to make them have that positive outlook that you see most cancer people that are suffering with cancer or overcome cancer have? Yeah. So I, I can't speak for the epilepsy community, but thank you for that insight. I think when it comes to cancer, there's, it's just black and white. It's either you survive it mm -hmm. or you don't. And right. I call it a bridge, literally like a bridge, crossing a bridge. I was yes. able to make it to the other side. So many of my survivors, uh, you know, my coach and so many people that I know who are survivors had made it. But then there's, there's the reality factor, right? The ones that sort of didn't. Uh, I think what's really important is to take stock in who you are as a person. And not what people think you are or whatever, but who you are as a person. And we all make, you know, faults. We all have our things that we have to kind of get better. And it's a it's a phrase that a good friend of mine once said about, we're here to polish the facets of our character. And yeah. I think when you go through an illness, whatever it is, I think it's an opportunity. It's like what uh, Oprah Winfrey once said a long time ago on her show. Sometimes a pebble will hit you, a stone will hit you, and a boulder will hit you. Yeah. And cancer for me was that boulder. And I think yeah. we need to just get really wise with ourselves, in touch with ourselves in any which way, even the uncomfortable conversations with ourselves and with other people, because I think that's the only way that we'll be really, really um, safe or feel like we're actually connected with other people is yeah. if we're very vulnerable with them and, and vulnerable with ourselves. So I think the first step is to really put down the facade. 
You yeah. Know, even if you're like a mother or a caretaker, just be like, listen, I, this is really hard. I, I, I don't know what to do. Because I think a large portion of society, including myself, wants to help, right? Look yeah. at the bright side. Look at the this. Look at the that. You know, survivor. And I think what ends up happening is then you put so much pressure on yourself. Oh, Whereas yeah. Whereas if you just tell people, this is how I feel. I don't know if I'm going to make it. And just let someone say that. And you don't have to make it better. You just have yeah. to listen. Just listen. Because right. that's what true empathy is. It's actually listening without judgment. So I think that's really the first step. And it sounds simple, but it's not simple at yeah. all. It's very, yeah. very difficult to do. Because it, you have to be very comfortable in that space. Um, and so what I suggest people to do is journal or to uh, meditate. Even if that yes. meditation doesn't have to be so confusing, it doesn't have to be lotus position. It could just be <laughs> sitting down, listening yes. to quiet music. Yes. Um, or even, um, you know, we all have smartphones now. Mm -hmm. Like recording a voice recording of you just rambling, just ramble to just get great it idea. out there, get that emotions out there. And, you know, people use prayer. You could use prayer. You could use song. You could use, yeah. you know, melodic music. You could use dance. Yes. Get the energy out of your body so yes. that at least you can have other ways. Because it, it's like it's like a glass jar. There's so much in a glass jar. You won't yeah. be able to fill anything in that glass. You got to let things go. Got to let um, things go, yeah. And so the way to do that is to let the energy dissipate. I think that's a great idea. I love the fact that you talk about journaling and I think journaling is so important because so many people repress their emotions and it, it, it really, it starts making them, you know, I, I, a lot of people just go numb. They, because they repress so many emotions inside and they're not sharing them and they're not, you know, you know, getting them out that they don't even know how they feel. They don't even know what direction to go into. And by journaling, like you said, you could start emptying out that jar and get it out there. I used to journal. And then when I got to a point where I feel like I overcame that area, I used to take rip the papers out and rip them up and throw them in the garbage and say, I'm done. I'm past that stage, you know, and it felt so good to, you know, get to that next level of life. Like I've overcome this. Now I'm going to get to this and I'm going to overcome this and I'm not going to let it knock me down. Like you said, I'm, you know, we get hit with little pebbles, we get hit with little rocks and we get hit with boulders, but it's, it's about getting up. It's about wanting to just get up and say, you know what, you might've hit me with a boulder, but you're not knocking me down permanently. And I think that's, I think that's a yeah. great idea. Yeah, I mean, in my work as a wellness journalist and a great columnist, I've spoken to several authorities, experts. You know, I've interviewed, um, you know, Venus Williams, Ice T, Deborah Messing, many, many people. I the fortune. And at the end of the day, they all might have this great, uh, glamorous or vetted lifestyle. They're experts, but we're human, and we yeah. all go and struggle through all these painful things. And I think the key first is to acknowledge it, and then yes. to find ways to. Like look through like one of my favorite songs is uh, Erica Badu. She talks about some called Bag Lady, and she's mm -hmm. like, "Haven't you the the lyric goes? Didn't someone ever tell you you could leave the bags down? You, yeah. you have to go through them first, but just leave them, you know, leave them, you know, discard them. And yeah. so, really, the key here is is what I would say is really going back to having authentic conversations with others and yourself beyond the fact that you're a doctor or or a lawyer or a celebrity. Um, whatever the case may be, you are human and we yes. uh, can lean on each other when times uh, are rough and times are bad. And I think that's so important. And, and I like the fact too, that, you know, you also mentioned about, you know, meditating, meditating, it can be very easy, you know, you just closing your eyes, breathing techniques, like you said, using a phone and just talking in the phone, you know, so many of these things are very, very helpful and they can clear the mind and they could actually make you learn things about yourself that you didn't even know. And the fact that you mentioned about, you know, celebrities, they're just people too. You know, I worked with celebrities for many years and they're just like me and you. And, and they, it's a job. They are an entertainer. But behind that entertainer, behind that, that facade is a human being. And they're going through life and they're going through the same emotions and the same things that we're going through, you know, and when the camera goes action, you know, then they put up that facade because that they're paid to put up that facade. But once that camera shuts off, that human being comes back 
you know, and people are people and we, you know, everybody can connect with everybody. It's just being able to be honest and be open. And that's the thing. I think being honest and not being afraid to, you know, worry about other people judging you. You know, I think people worry so much of what other people are going to think about them, but it's not what they think. I think it's what we think. Don't you think of ourselves? hundred percent. I mean, hundred percent, even when I was quote unquote, called the cancer survivor or, or whatever, we're going through the cancer struggle. Yeah. I had shame around my cancer. It sounds weird, Stacey, but I had shame around it. And I, I kind of wanted to hide from it um, because I felt like I did something wrong. I felt that how could this happen to me and on all these other things, even though I was focused on meeting it half, you know, meeting it full throttle and doing what I can, I still felt those emotions. It took me years to unravel and unpack oh, yeah. my own journey in that sense. I get that, you know, for years, I never told anybody that I had epilepsy and I just tried to be like everybody else, you know, and, and I wasn't, you know, I was, I, I am like other people, but you know, they may be, you know, I have an illness and, you know, you went through, you know, a disease and you overcame it, but it doesn't change who you are as a person and everybody has something. And that's what people have to realize, I think too. Yeah, I, I think also it comes back uh, to the fray of uh, feeling um, disconnected. I think a large part portion of us are disconnected. COVID had a lot to do with the actual physical yeah. disconnection. But in general, I think we're trying to divide it as people. And we have to com kind of look at the commonalities rather than the differences yeah. um, as a way to bridge the conversation. Because we're not going to get anywhere if we have completely dismissive viewpoints, right? It's, it's okay to disagree, but if we have completely opposite sides uh, of viewpoints, we are living humanity-wise, we're living on the same planet and we have to learn to get along with one another. And right. by doing that, the only way that I found and the only way that all the great teachers throughout history have taught mm -hmm. is that the only way forward is to go inward. So you got to go inward first, yes. that way you can bridge the gap. You know, you, you can actually bridge that with someone else. I like that. I like that a lot, you know, and, and I think, I think COVID did have a big impact on how people, you know, were and, 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 you know, especially people going through illnesses, you know, and, and, and also I think other people also learned how hard it is for other people with illnesses. You know, there's so many people that are sick and they can't drive, they rely on others and they are stuck in their own house and and it's like being in prison in your own home and even when you have like cancer you know you can't go up and about your your body you're you're weak you're drained you're hurting you're in pain you know um you're going through you know if you're going through chemotherapy you're losing your hair you're going through emotional and physical trauma you know and um you know and you're, like I said, in prison in your own home, you can't go outside and enjoy life and, and visit your friends. And people were kind of confined, you know, and, but, you know, I think people got a taste, other people that were healthy got a taste of that when they were confined as well. You know, it was it, a lot of people went through a lot of depression because they were confined and they couldn't get out and about. Can you imagine people going through cancer? You know, people, maybe this opened up some other people's eyes to realize people going through diseases and going through illness you know, it's not an easy, it's it's a very difficult path and people have to really, you know, not judge people and, but, you know, help these people and help them not because you feel sorry for them, but because you care and you want to help them. Yeah. I, and, and I've seen this evidently, right? I mentioned, I cover various experiences from South by Southwest to, um, uh, you know, Global Wellness Summit. I just yeah. came back from Italy, covered a wellness retreat there. And I've seen this idea of basic wellness, right? Yeah. Eating right, getting sunlight, drinking water, meditating to like Uber wellness, right? Like yeah. getting IV drips and, and getting all these things that are like so expensive. But I think really what it's at the end of the day boiled down to is people want to take responsibility because yeah. they don't want to get sick, right? Whereas right. we took it for granted sometimes. You people did. now are making the, the conscious effort to want to do that. And I think that's the first step towards overcoming any type of illness. The people that yeah. I serve are cancer survivors who are worried about, you know, reoccurrence or side yeah. effects or emotional toll, or as someone called it, that my, that her body betrayed her and she's coming to terms with 
handling the fact that she always thought of herself as the healthiest person. And now she's faced with the fact that she lost a, a body part or yeah. that something has been taken away from her. Right. right. And so yeah. that's really sort of the realm or the niche that I deal with, but it could yeah. be any type of illness or any type of debility. Right. Um, right. Because at the end of the day, we, who are you really, are you really your body parts or are you really more than that? And yes. that's a, that's a, that's a question that everyone needs to at, answer for themselves, but they have to look and ferret deep within to figure yes. out the, uh, the, the, the true meaning of it. I like that. I, I I think that's a great uh, point that you just made. You know, you may, you know, unfortunately you may lose a body part, but who are you as a person, you know? And I, 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 you know, when you really think about that in a deep sense, you know, you are that same person. You may not have a certain body part. You may have lost a certain body part, but you still are that same person that you were before you had the illness and before that body part was taken away from you. You know, there is, you know, it's just, it's just the, the physical realm that, you know, this, the changes, you know, that occurred, but you still are that wonderful person, no matter what, you know? I like yeah. that a lot. I That's mean, this, yeah, I mean, this echoes. So, so I, uh, I d had many interview series. The first one was I survived cancer. Here is how I did it. It then became a book this past February, literally the next day, my book promotions team told me it became a bestseller in four categories. To me, that really honestly meant that the story of hope, thank you. The story of hope really um, was something that people gravitate towards too. Yes. But this conversation reminds me of one of my contributors in the book. Her name is Christine. To this day, so she's a model. And so she had breast cancer. And so she lost both her breasts. Mm -hmm. um, and she flaunts her breastless body. She doesn't have any, you know, prosthesis. And she will go on Instagram sometimes and say how people are just very cruel to her sometimes. Mm -hmm. One of them even asks, are you a guy or are you a female or what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, and she says it doesn't bother her as much, but she realizes she's still Christine. She's yeah. still this woman. And even though people don't want to perceive her that way, she still has all the assets. She's a strong warrior woman who's been through and gone through as much as she's gone through. And so she's there for me always as a reminder because my cancer was a blood cancer. You can't really see it. You don't really know, right? Until you right. go and do some like scan on myself. But these people, another contributor was, um, uh, you know, someone like, you know, named Rob Paulson. He basically um, was the voice for Animaniacs, Pinky in the Brain. He had throat cancer. His livelihood was in his voice. He had throat oh, cancer. He wow. lost his throat. He's so skinny now, uh, but he's like, I'm still working in Hollywood. I'm still doing what I love to do. Because he great. goes, that's what cancer for me, what I was scared of was that it was going to take away what I love to do, which is do the voices that I do. Um, and so really it goes back to what I was really going to just come back to, which was really at the end of the day, who do you want to be? Who do you want to express in your day to day? Mm -hmm. And what is that vision that you want to create for yourself? Because those are really key elements to start to get you thinking and right. get you motivated. I think that's, that's a great point, you know, and, you know, for people, you know, who, um, where can they find your book? Tell your, your title again for, you know, so people know what your book is. Cool. Sure. So my book um, came from a few interview series. So I have a series, I Survived Cancer, Here is How I Did It. I have another one, f uh, Five Things you, you Need to Know from a Doctor's Perspective. Um, I have uh, something, Rising to Resilient, How to Be Resilient During Turbulent Times, The Free from the Fear of Failure. Um, so I have many interview series, but that first one was I interviewed over 175 cancer survivors. And wow. I chose, my editor's like, this has to be a book. So we ended up choosing 35. I told my own story. Um, so the book is called I Survived Cancer. Here is how I did it. 35 cancer survivors share their journey. Uh, it's available on Amazon and select bookstores. But all this really could be found on my website, which is thehumanresolve.com. I'm on all social media at The Human Resolve on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and then on LinkedIn, Savio P. Clementi. Uh, you can also go on the website, The Human Resolve. There's a book website where I have a trailer of 20 12 of those uh, survivors and it's called I survived cancer.co. Oh, that's wonderful. And, you know, I'm congratulations about getting the bestseller. That that's a, a big accomplishment and congratulations. Now, Thank you. Yeah. You know, um, literally woke up in 24 hours, but for me, I swear to you, I felt like I was carrying those survivors. And for me, I was just focused on landing the plane, making sure the plane landed Yes. And it was great to feel that. It's great to know that. 
But to me, I just really want to spread the message of hope to people because I think it's important in a dim, um, very darkened um, feeling and sensing that we're all going through. I think it's important. Now for people, you know, um, before we end our conversation, for people who are just diagnosed with cancer, what tips would you give them about coping with cancer, about taking the next steps? Because, you know, like we talked earlier in the conversation, you know, we talked about, you know, the fear and, and what they go through when they first, you know, are diagnosed. But if you had to break it down into some some tips to just help people, you know, so they can get on the right path and and get, you know, on the right mindset, what tips would you give them? Sure. You know, these tips are sort of mirror the other side of the survivor's journey, but just mm -hmm. if I found out that someone had it, I would say a few things. It's number one, really figure out what's happening within your body. Like literally what's happening. I know you have cancer, but what's actually happening in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions, write it down or speak it out or type it up, whatever you want to do. That's number one. Number two, get a support. I didn't have this because I'm someone who just is built differently. So in hindsight, maybe could have, but when you go to your doctor's appointment, Get someone like a family member or a friend you trust who are not only there for you for physical support, but they can act as your scribe. Write down all the technical medical things that your doctor is saying. That way you can just focus on how you're feeling in the moment. So that's number two. Three, get competent medical advice. And to be forearmed is to be for, I mean, is to be forewarned is to be forearmed. So if you feel something is off or there's no alignment there, go to other people that have that uh, expertise. Uh, what worked for me, I'm a board certified wellness coach, so I'm not advocating for people to do it. But I, in between my treatments, I did other modalities. That's just what worked for me. Right. But you need to figure out what's going to work for you. So you need to research that and explore that and figure out what that is for you. Um, and I think really my fifth tip uh, is to realize to yourself that you getting frustrated and nervous and scared and fearful, let those emotions pass through you but they're not going to get you to where you need to go. What's going to get you to need to where you go is what I mentioned earlier, pulling that higher self, the one that's really exuberant that yes. wants to get through this, pulling that from the lower self that's going through this muck and disaster and feeling like things uh, are going wrong in your life. I think those are great tips. You know, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And before we go, just tell everybody your website once again, so they don't forget it. Cause I want them to go to your website because it's an amazing website and it has a lot of great things on it. Oh, wonderful. So the website's called thehumanresolve.com. You can see all my articles, you can my podcast, um, all, uh, you know, my book link uh, and also my, my three month coaching program, which at the end of the day, people have told me is really transformational. So. Yeah, it, it is very transformational. I, I've read a lot of your interviews and I, I've listened to a lot of your um, podcasts. And I have to say, you you really do bring a lot of inspiration and motivation to people. Um, and, you know, you don't even have to have cancer. Just the, you know, just the, your way of thinking, the, the way you uh, view life and the the morals and the mindset and the advice you give is is, is just outstanding. And it, the principles that, you know, are behind all those words and all the information that you provide, you know, can really help people in, in many ways and not just with cancer, but just going through any illness or any, any uh, condition. Um, you know, I, I really suggest going to Savio Clemente's website, checking it out because it, it, it really is a mind blower. You have a lot of wonderful information and I commend you for everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And really the last thing I want to leave all your listeners is seek wisdom no matter what you're going through, even in the good, seek to seek what that wisdom is showing you or telling you, because I think we're all here on some level to grow as people. Um, and um, when something is debilitating as cancer or epilepsy or any type of illness happens in your life, you have to figure out what is the meaning behind it. And even if you can't figure out the meaning, you have to feel good within self that yeah. that meaning will come to you. Yes, 100%. Thank you so much, Savio, for coming today. I, I appreciate your time and, you know, thank you for everything that you have, um, you know, provided us and provided our listeners with. Thank you so much, Stacey. This has been an absolute joy. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And you have a great day. Okay. You too.